Yo, what is going on guys? Ricky Tomlinson back here with another video. And today's video is another Climb the Ladder episode. It is another podcast episode. And we got another guest on the podcast. Yes, I'm so excited to get more and more guests. And today's guest is G Tricks Band on TikTok or just G Tricks in general. Very happy to have him on the podcast. Very excited to be able to talk baseball with him. And without further ado, right into it so what's going on what's going on nothing much not so much anymore well this is my podcast it's called climb the ladder and thank you for coming on i appreciate it man i appreciate you taking the time out of your day i'm sure you're getting a call bro yes sir yes sir i was i am and i am so we got the man himself we got g tricks yes sir tricks what what do you prefer to be called on uh just by the way G tricks or you know it don't matter. It's really up to you. I get, I do it all. You know, people call me G, G tricks, G T, all that. All right, cool. I'll just, I'll just be uh, give you uh, your content name, G tricks for now. But yeah, let's get right into it. And kind of first question we got for here is um, your journey of baseball. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey of baseball up to the point right now? Um, we can start off with like, all right, start off like six years old. Always played. I was just like natural at that point. Um, got to travel ball, played with a lot, like really high tier teams. One of the higher like Iwo Shield Canes, like right under American. So it's like we had a bunch of D1 okay. commits, D3 commits, D2 commits, all Juco, all that. So I didn't make American, but I was like at that top tier Iwo Shield Canes part. I was with Maruchi Stars for a couple of years. Um, I try to think who else, but that's really the main two that I was with. I was also with D-Bat for a couple of years, um, out of Texas, national, the 2019 national team, and graduating high school. I didn't really play high school. I had, uh, I was actually in the hospital my se- like for senior year trial, so I didn't play at all. I uh, made varsity at junior year, and I was chilling there. I didn't really play because just junior, and I wasn't that good, and people were ahead of me that were better than me. Um, D1 offer, low D1 offers, at uh my senior year because uh, i showcase in the summers and but chose to go d3 a high d3 which was top 25 at the time like one of the top 25s and then after that i had i didn't play that year because of freshman and freshman going into like a really high d3 program didn't like that took a year off uh worked I didn't really, I like, I literally just worked. I didn't do any baseball. Um, year after that, got in contact with a local JUCO because I want to get back into it. And that's what where I am right now. And now I'm just chilling, doing whatever in JUCO ball. That's sick, man. That's sick. So we kind of have a uh, different pass. I mean, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just, it's crazy to see how a white five ounce ball could just make make a crazy difference between different other people and just bring everybody else together yeah but with your recruiting process since you're obviously you told your journey right now to the point did you find things easy did you find things hard like can you uh elaborate on those kind of things um when you're younger you don't really know so you looking back at it now i wish i worked a little more harder yeah like now that i'm like dang I really had this talent and I didn't really do, I like, I didn't work as hard as I could. So that's, re- it's really hard now, thinking about it now, but before I just thought everything was easy. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely can, can, um, can speak for, uh, like myself and I can definitely relate to you as well. Cause I definitely was like one of those kids out of like little league that was like, the biggest dude, the dude who crushed home runs, 13, 14. I was like the best player on the team. And I kind and I was like the kind of kid that's like, oh, he's going to go D1 someday. And I kind of let that yeah. get to my head. And I kind of just like, all right, I have I have talent. Like I have natural talent for the game. That's, that's fine. I don't really need to work that, that often, you know. And then I just went into high school and everyone kind of was, I was just all right then. I wasn't like the best kid on the team. I was just all right. And that's what I kind of regret the most about is not getting as much work in as I should. Cause I, I do a lot of work now. If I did a lot of that work during then times would be so different, but I don't really like to reflect on the past too much. Cause again, it's in the past for a reason, but now 
since we have different pairs and i'm at d3 school and you're at juco yeah so what about why why did you want to transfer to juco it was it the like more opportunities of playing was it just because that d3 school you weren't you saw like oh man like i wasn't gonna play and then like you wanted to like find some other opportunities why why did you settle down at this juco and come back to baseball i did not uh so like i didn't play that much and i was out of shape to be honest i was probably it was probably really bad at that point and i didn't like the environment that all the players i no no hate to them but i just didn't feel like i fit in yeah. like they, they're cool they're all cool like i didn't fit i feel like i didn't fit in so then that's when i this is when co this is also covid so like oh everything's just falling apart so I said, nah, I gotta stop and just like took the year off. And then I didn't really, since I didn't do baseball, I was getting more out of shape and then all of that. And then Juco was really the only way I had a way back into baseball. So I had to call, I, I knew one of the Juco coaches nearby, called him up and I said, yeah, I need a, you need a player. I'm, I'm down to play. I'm gonna work my butt off all, all year. And oh, and I also transferred that fall to, the, to another Juco. I don't know if I, I didn't mention that, but I also transferred another Juco next fall who would offer me more playing time, which I did. And then I balled out, hit like 350, four home runs. And I don't know how many RBIs, but I balled out that year and made him regret for letting me transfer out. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. Well, since we're talking about Juco, what would you what would you say that Juco is where do you think they're they differential between different like levels in your eyes because obviously you see the funding all that crap but like yep. in your eyes what separated kind of like that d3 from like now juco juco is all on your own you if you want to get better you want to play next level you have to do it all on your own if you're not going to do it then you're not going to like move past where you are that's the difference also in d3 or division schools there are a lot of more practices everyone there's more strength coaches there's more coaches that help guide you in the right direction like i said juco is all on your own so therefore you have to like research everything you want to do and research like how am i going to get better you you really only have like at least one real coach and the other ones are just helping out so it's really just coaching and all that most division schools have good uh like facilities we don't really have that much facilities it's just literally whatever we can find yeah that's that juco mindset just getting it done yeah. whenever however whenever that's definitely i mean we kind of have a little bit like that when in d3 like we have our own training facility but we're not allowed to be at that training facility unless it's at our practices like we can't just go on our own time and hitting that when we want which kind of sucks but yeah we it's just it's crazy to see the difference between different levels of the game because you see these d1 schools they have millions and millions of dollar facilities yeah. and they literally can get anything they want when they want and then yeah. it just gradually just gets lower and lower the fundings as well because us, us at d3 like we have to hand in hand our jerseys back at the end of the season we yeah, gotta hand our, hand our pants like we we get nothing for free obviously like these d1 schools yeah we get these team stores yeah for real and then we end up paying more money to play the sport and doing all these paperwork and stuff like that it's just crazy to see how like the just the fundings in general between different levels yeah. is and eventually at, at the time you think it's bad but now like it just makes up your your work ethic just like just crazy because now like i used to have excuses like oh i don't have this to work with then that's why i didn't work as hard when i'm when i was younger but now i'm at d3 now i know like i can get it in no no matter where i'm at like if it's yeah. like if it's just like my my apartment building like the back of my apartment building i can do plyos throw it against the wall or some something like that like those levels like treat you like to, to just get it in no matter what yeah get it in so i know you're big you're pretty big on tiktok i'm not gonna yeah lie. you're pretty big when did you kind of start getting into content making um content? i've been i've been making videos like all my life as well really so but when I got really into it was that fall, I transferred to Juco, I'd say. So when I just started posting a lot of content. Like, So if people want to grow on TikTok, real the real reason why people grow is they 
it's they do it because they love it so you want to you love baseball you love making content just keep on posting keep on posting one day one of those videos are going to hit one day and you guys stay consistent and then more you stay consistent more videos going to hit so that's how you grow really and that's how i got back got into tiktok i mean so did you did you start like kind of like the when the tiktok like first started uh no i started uh like literally a year and a half ago i'd say a year and a half ago all right cool cool so when did you like around what point from a year and a half ago did you kind of like realize like okay like this is popping off like like this content people like my content like this i have no idea i just like i said stayed consistent kept on posting and it just grew on its own so i don't really like oh i didn't have a real reason like oh my epiphany moment damn this is doing well all right that's, that's it was the, like it was just gradual every day so consistency is key man yeah uh, i'm trying to get to that 10k mark and i'm just like dang like these videos these videos aren't hitting as as much as they used to but i know like tiktok definitely has that kind of slope where it's like the videos are gonna hit 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 and then they're just gonna drop yeah. drop drop and it's all it about consistency happens. it happens a lot yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. do you have any uh future plans for content like do you want to like expand maybe on more apps do you want like i know because i know you have a brand i know you have a brand yeah. and the brand looks sick do you want it's more on the brand like stuff like that uh when i so the future i literally just i post i already post on youtube i post cool. on tiktok i post on instagram um i don't really have i like i post on all like those three major ones really i don't really want to expand i have a twitter but i have a couple thousand there but that, just those three right now is what i'm focusing on all right cool 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 so um if you had to say kind of like your who's your who's your biggest inspiration who's your biggest inspiration that man in the mirror man in the mirror so your yeah. yourself is your biggest inspiration yeah it's me and then the people who back me so all the fans the supporters those are my biggest ones especially fan but that's just a given as well but those are really all of them people who believe in me i can't let them down and i can't let myself down so i i, I get inspired by the people who who are inspired by me so it just it's like giving back and all that that's dope that's dope so if i always kind of ask this question towards kind of like the end of my interviews or podcast episodes if you had to give advice to people watching this podcast episode right now what would, what would the piece of advice you would give them never get comfortable like i said me and you following that path you got comfortable way too early mm -hmm. you gotta keep on working hard you may think you're the best right now but i swear there's someone wherever is gonna is working way harder than you if you're comfortable right now there's something wrong so yeah i, I feel like i posted a tiktok a couple days ago about the how the perfect game is already starting to rank these eighth graders that aren't even in high school like the 2027s and i got yeah. a lot of a lot of bash kind of from like those kind of age range just saying like oh my god that makes me want to work harder and stuff like that but i'm just like you gotta just focus on yourself and focus on your own own like growth in the game like, yeah you shouldn't be worried about who's the number one and i should be trying to be better than him no you should, you should be better be trying to be better than the next person you got to be better than you the guy you were yesterday exactly Except exactly yourself. exactly you get one percent better every day every single day but yeah man that's kind of all i got for you dude I, I i appreciate you taking the time out of your day yeah to give me this little this little podcast episode i mean this has been this has been pretty fun man it's pretty fun and just i appreciate you man keep up the good content thank you for liking my content because i yeah. saw that and i was like no way g g tricks like that like that video and i was like damn i, I might have to just shoot my shot see if you wanted to come on my podcast with me yeah, of course. Hey, man. you having me on, man. Just keep grinding. We're going to keep grinding yes, and get to that point yes. one day. Yes, sir. Also, good luck on your journey and all that. Hopefully, you're doing well and bright future ahead of everyone listening, watching, and for us too as well. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. All right. This has been Ricky Templeton with Climb the Ladder. I really don't know what episode it is right now, but it's featuring G-Tricks. Yes, sir. And, and we're out. All right. Peace.